I said to myself, look, one day, if I have a chance, I want to be able to, if you will, deploy the enterprise or high-tech playbook that I have had the opportunity to build as a leader in the tech space to this sector. Because I don't just see healthcare as a business sector. It is a public challenge that it's posing to all of us as business leaders. That was the voice of Dilaur Syed, CEO of Lumiana, explaining how he's bringing high-tech principles and AI into the healthcare space in an effort to drive down costs and improve quality of care. You're listening to How I Transform This, presented by Versus 12. Versus 12 is the award-winning Salesforce Gold Consulting Partner focused on healthcare innovation nationwide. In this episode, Delauer talks about some of the ways Lumiata is using AI to make predictions, interpret data, and manage risk in healthcare. He also shares his optimism around the ways artificial intelligence can help us manage the enormous problem of COVID-19. There's a huge need here for us to improve public policies for us to improve the delivery of our care and also the way we manage risk and so forth. And AI and data can play a role in all of those areas. I'm your host, Clark Buckner, and along with Versus 12 founder and CEO, Tammy Hawes, each episode, we're seeking out healthcare technology industry leaders, exploring stories of success through the transformation of healthcare. For more stories like this, visit versus12.com slash podcast. Now let's jump in. My name is Dilawar Sayed. I'm CEO at Lumiara, and I'm based in San Mateo, California. Thank you so much for joining us on How I Transform This. We've got a great episode up ahead. We're going to be talking a little about your journey as a healthcare innovator. We're going to be talking a little about what your company has been working on. And especially, we're going to be talking, we love interesting topics like how AI is influencing healthcare right now and in the future. So there's a lot of interesting things happening around us. And so just really appreciate you taking the time and your busy schedule. Well, happy to be here. And thank you for having me, Clark and Tammy. Yes, thank you so much. I'm excited to hear about what brought you to where you are now and also what your vision is for the future. So thank you. So to get things started off, we sometimes like to use a past, present, future format when we get to know some of our guests and basically just helps us catch up quickly to not only what you're working on today, but the the journey you've been on leading up to it. So I understand you were did not start in healthcare, but you had a successful career in tech. And I'm curious, and also a, a, a career, uh, amazing civic career. So I'm really curious how you, know, how you started there and then what brought you into healthcare. So Clark, you're right. Um, I spent most of my career in um, high tech and in, in enterprise software, consumer tech, early part of my career. I was at Yahoo and most recently uh, built a company called Freshworks, which is in the, in the customer uh, management software space. And you know, my exposure to healthcare was more on the civic side. I served in the Obama administration as an advisor. And when we were rolling out ACA, um, I got to see up front, <laughs> up close and personal, the challenge, uh, the, the cost of care that uh, presented to this country uh, from both a, I would say, moral issue, but also just the fact that it's not, te- it's, it's not tenable, the, the way the cost is rising. And understand, and, and you know, got to see how complex the industry is, and how the administration is trying to move the ball forward with competing stakeholders, and that you know, conversation about reform continues on to this day, although it has stalled in obviously recent years. So I said to myself, look, one day if I have a chance, I want to be able to, if you will, deploy the enterprise or high tech playbook that I have had, you know, the opportunity to build as a leader in the tech space to this sector, because I don't just see healthcare as a business sector. It is a public challenge that it's posing to all of us as business leaders. And so I came to the industry and I came to Lumiara with a view to doing our bit to help lower the cost of care. 
and making sure that we could make use of big data and AI, which is still you know, somewhat early in its journey in this space to solve some mission critical issues, whether these are about cost of care or the quality of care. Now, obviously, our world is upside down since you know, this horrible pandemic has taken over our lives. And I think there was probably uh, never a, a more urgent time to make use of this technology and these, this new approach to solving some of these issues that we just talked about. That's my thought exactly. And, you know, I got into this profession as well because I thought there was so much that could be transformed in healthcare. It's glad to hear about your experience in the ACA. And uh, there's so much that needs to be done as far as technology that has been done in other industries that's not there in healthcare. So why did you decide to build an AI platform instead of just models around AI? Good question. And so tell me my view is that, look, at the end of the day, when it comes to healthcare and, and the customers that we are selling to, these are health plans, providers, you know, leaders like you know, chief underwriting officer, chief actuary, the CFO, we are in the enterprise business. And that's, that's the rule number one you learn in high tech and software companies is that when you're, when you're selling enterprise software, enterprise products, the solution has to scale to enterprise needs, because at the end of the day, you are helping enable a critical, mission-critical business process. I think what I've seen with a lot of AI companies, and that's just not in the healthcare space, but overall, their focus on data science often doesn't marry with the broader enterprise solution uh, mindset. So I tell my team every single day, we are in the enterprise business. And yes, we're in healthcare, and yes, we're using AI as an enabler. But at the end of the day, we're building products, and those products have to scale. They have to be operationalized. They have to have a business user experience. They have to allow the business users to measure, if you will, their success and effectiveness and so forth. So with that view in mind, we had to, if you will, chart a new script. We're not in a consulting business where you're brought in to build an AI model, and then you hand it over to somebody, and then they can run with it. We want to build a product company where we can solve some critical business challenges. And we are there along the way. So that meant a different, a fundamentally different approach to building AI products, not models, but a platform. So not to geek out on your listeners, <laughs> we took a very holistic approach. When we ingest large scale data sets, we go through an entire process of data management, data quality, cleansing, enriching data with disease information and labels, getting it machine learning ready, and then building models on it. Now, that entire process, Tammy, is automated. That's what the platform has done. So what it, it used to take us as a company weeks and months to build a model. Now, if I'm working with a health plan or a provider, and if we get data, let's say today, in the next two to three weeks, thanks to this platform and the automation, the data is machine learning ready, and not only that, we have the first set of predictions out. That's what platform is allowed to do. So as a company, if you're serving multiple plans and multiple providers, we can move faster, quicker. Not only that, we can also make this platform available to our customers so they can continue to build on these models, help operationalize them in their business processes. So that's why we built a platform to make sure that we can not only scale ourselves, but also ensure this will be operationalized in our customers' business processes seamlessly. And that's the key, is because once you understand what your data is telling you, you have to act upon it. And so I'm a big proponent of, you know, no, number one, understanding what you're trying to get to and then taking action on it. So that's fantastic. Absolutely. You were just talking about these predictions that you're able to create. And as you're talking about, you know, creating something that is able to scale to the unique needs that you're serving. And also you, you said a couple of times you're in the enterprise business. So that definitely, you know, there's some big moving parts to healthcare. So when you're able to get these predictions, how is that designed to make a better impact on healthcare, whether it's, you know, financially or operationally or clinically? What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. Look, I mean, these predictions are uh, to a business end. They are to a, a certain objective. So there are a couple of key ways in which Lumiara is helping 
healthcare organizations. Our focus has been primarily on cost and risk management. So let's talk about cost. Uh, so we will use our, our models and algorithms that are built on a pretty vast data set. So we have we have up to 100 million members uh, and patients worth of data set. Uh, that data set is used to build these algorithms, uh, which are predicting what is what is you know, Clark's future cost, which is a function of what his risk is, what his uh, you know, utilization has been in the healthcare system, and you know what some of the potential disease onset he might have. That cost information is used in a whole range of business use cases at the health plan side to make sure that the plans are designing health plans benefits that are appropriate for this particular user or member, and also in terms of how they think about rates. A lot of times when you look at a you know, premium setting, you have actuaries who are using sort of, uh, I would say, textbook actuarial methods to figure out what the price of, uh, of, of a health plan should be for an employer. They don't make use of machine learning. They, make, they don't make use of data. On the other hand, we are looking at you know millions of members' worth of data set and, and, and be able to predict and say, we believe this is what the cost is based on these literally millions of machine learning features, as opposed to a handful of parameters that are used by an actuary, and use those cost prediction to have more targeted pricing and product design versus an archaic, if you will, and a legacy approach to pricing and packaging your products as a health plan. So that's a one big area where we help the business of healthcare. And on the other end, the business users who are using us are actuaries, underwriters, often salespeople. And that's where I think, you know, even a CRM comes in. You know, how do you inject pricing information into a you know, Salesforce if, if it is being used by a health plan and so forth? So in the health plan side, that's where we largely play cost and risk management. Uh, there's also a huge angle around pre pre huge angle around intervention. So if we can predict who the high cost member is going to be, and if there's an integrated health system, let's say in case of Kaiser, you can do some proactive care for that member. Now on the provider side, things get very interesting, and I'm especially very energized right now with COVID, what's going on. So we have opportunities where we are going in and our predictions are being used to figure out which patients should be candidates for at-home care because clinics are not the place to treat them because they are vulnerable populations. You know, these are folks who would be at a high risk of infection and not recovering from it. And that warms my heart, right, that where you can use data and AI and our algorithms that we have today but put them to a, a use case that is not just business but has a huge social impact. Um, so that's the kind of things we do at, at providers. But of, there's also other use cases around hospital admission, readmission. And all those predictions are used to manage you know, capacity and, and resource planning, if you will, at the provider level. Speaking of COVID, um, and one of the things that I really love about your background is that you're technical. Tell us about this hackathon for AI solutions for COVID that you were recently involved in. And yes. What was that like? Wow, it was um, it was incredible. It was just, it just moved our company. That's the best way to put it. Um, so let me step back. And, and when COVID-19 pandemic hit the Bay Area, and as you may know, that the Bay Area counties, nine counties here in our region, were, were one of the first ones, uh, if not the first one in the country, to issue a directive for shelter in place. And we all had to go work from home very early. And Lumiera was actually pretty early in following this and be prepared for that. And I got a leadership team together and said, look, this is our moment. We happen to be in the business of healthcare. We happen to have access to, and we are privileged to have access to some incredible minds in a company and access to data and so forth. We should be helping solve this challenge, which right now we're all grappling with. And so there are a couple of ways we decided to engage. And one was the hackathon, is that why don't we just become, if you will, a channel for driving some innovation globally? So we very quickly put together this COVID-19 focus global AI hackathon. Now the emphasis is being on global and AI. So this is not software. We wanted people, we wanted data scientists to build AI hacks, but they have to be on COVID. And we deliberately pushed it around the world. Um, because we all know this pandemic is a global challenge. It's not a U.S. problem. 
It is not a China problem. It is a global problem. And if you're going to solve this, the brilliant minds from around the world have to come together as one. And we saw that spirit. We saw that spirit come through on the Slack channel that we had. We had teams being formed from 59 nations, 236 cities. Many of these people had only come into contact with each other on this Slack channel that we had started for the, for the hackathon. In the end, we got 53 uh, submissions that we thought met the criteria. We had amazing judges, our own investor, Vinod Khosla, uh, my friend Nish Chopra from the, from the White House days, as I'm sure people know him, you know, he's very energetic. Uh, we had people from, um, you know, public sector, health organizations who helped judge. And so, but it was incredible to see the innovation that came out, some of the submissions that were made, and they were pretty broad. They went all the way around some sort of, uh, you know, hacks around managing elderly care to even, you know, how do you fast track uh, vaccine development? So very energizing, also for the team internally, right? Because we have a sizable tech team and they're inspired uh, to also act as we move forward. I love hearing the passion in your voice when you're talking about this. And I'm also encouraged by the statement you were saying earlier, how COVID-19, you're seeing, you know, you're in some ways excited about trying to defeat this and working together. And, you know, there's, it's, a, it's a heavy topic. There's a lot of emotions surrounding it. But I'm curious, based on your recent experience by um, completing that hackathon for the AI solutions as it relates to COVID-19, what are some of the outcomes? What, what, where's your mind at today? Where's your company's mind at today? And are you still feeling that optimism after that? Look, as entrepreneurs, we are optimists. We have to be. I also believe that it's a duty. It's our essential duty as leaders, as citizens, that we are responding to this in, in a positive way and use this crisis to actually drive innovation and solve public health issues. Clearly, we have seen as a world, as a community, and for sure as a country, we were not prepared for this. And once it's okay, but again, it's not forgivable, especially given our resources and our might and our, and our wealth as the nation. So what I believe a company like Lumiara and what we are doing in our realm is we took bull by the by horn very quickly. So there is a couple of ways in which we are building solutions to actually help with the impact of this pandemic. Number one, you know, I think we all know that there's a great deal of uncertainty about what's going to happen in the fall, as an example, right? There might be, God forbid, another wave, which is very likely to be the case. We may have months. By the way, I am part of the task force uh, here in Silicon Valley that whose mandate is to help us recover from this pandemic economically and, and anew, uh, working with the mayor's office. From what we see, it's very likely that we will not have anything available for another year or so, contrary to what we're hearing right now in terms of vaccine. So how do we prepare ourselves as a system, as a healthcare ecosystem, to manage the impact of this pandemic? So a couple of ways in which Lumiara is helping is we want to be able to strengthen decision support at, let's say, health plans. They have no idea right now how to manage the risk of COVID-19 in the populations they cover. Our models our products can be part of the solution. If the actuarial model don't work in normal times, let me tell you, they are not going to work in these times. COVID-19 is a high dimensionality problem. And machine learning is made for solving high dimensionality problems. So we already are actually talking to some actuaries and, and leaders at healthcare organizations to see how could Lumiara models, Lumiara products could be used to better manage risk of their populations come 2021, 2022. That's one area. The second area is around the provider aspect. I alluded to this earlier. How do you make sure that you are preventing folks who are more vulnerable from being going in, into clinics? Again, there's a prediction aspect to it. We talked about, we have right now a use case where we are working with a clinic and predicting which candidates are eligible or should be directed for at-home care for this very acute condition so that they are not exposed to potential virus, if you will, environment in a, in a clinic. Um, so there's a breadth of use cases, Clark, in which AI and data could be used. Another big area is telehealth. You know, we all know that 
in the last couple of months, almost half of all physicians in the U.S. have used telehealth. We are generating new data at a lightning speed as we speak. And we had this incredible opportunity to make use of the data quickly and efficiently to all sorts of productive uses. We're also looking at that. So there is quite a bit to be done. Obviously, this leverages some of the core algorithms we have. It leverages our platform as a company. But more importantly, I think it leverages our mission at heart around being in the business of driving better outcomes, lowering the cost of care, and making sure that we are actually being problem solvers, if you will, when you look at the worst public health challenge the world has seen in almost a, in, in almost a century. Delauer, something I've kind of thought to myself as we're watching the statistics come out on the COVID cases is that it seems like we should know more about those COVID patients at this point. And, and maybe someone does know that and the public doesn't, but I thought to myself that there's probably a challenge with interoperability because you have to get all of that data around these patients in a centralized database or in an AI tool to be able to really dig into that. So how is solving for that problem that we all have as healthcare technologists? Great point. Um, look, data is fuel for AI companies. It's fuel for Lumiara without data. Uh, we can't build models. Um, we have our data set, but we're going to need new data. We, we will need to see this data, which has COVID populations. And in order to make sure we can work with diverse set of uh, you know, data sources, um, you know, we are actually now thinking about developing a tool set that can quickly interact with all sorts of data sources. But I think you alluded to this, Tammy, that the challenge is uh, less on the technology end, the challenge is more on the on the data supply and source end. Unfortunately, we did not start testing soon. Secondly, the, even the tests we are doing, which just picked up recently, uh, we, are not, we are not reporting data quickly enough as a country. And so there is a downstream effect to this. But I'm hoping in the coming months, we all will have access to that COVID data, whether it's coming through the claims records or it's coming through the providers. And then, you know, let me add a platform or other companies, and by the way, the problem is big enough for multiple companies to be involved in this, you know, get to have tools in place that can quickly interact with the data so our data scientists can do their magic, right? Get the data machine learning ready and see what the trends are going forward. So this is just fascinating. And um, I think as technologists, we all have a vision of the future, but tell us what your crystal ball looks like for AI and healthcare. Tell me it's a very big question. Uh, and I hope I do justice to it. Uh, but let me step back. I think the reality is, and we all know this as business leaders, you know this as a leader as well, our world has changed. Our world has changed uh, definitely in the world of healthcare. It has changed big time. It, it's not coming back in many ways. You know, we just talked about telehealth. That was always a dream. It's now a reality. It's the new normal. People would question why do I have to get in a car and drive myself to a clinic and wait in 30 minutes and then see somebody who's rushing me out of the door uh, <laughs> in five minutes. I can do all that five minutes from my office in my home. That has huge implications on new forms of data and what do we do with telehealth. Similarly around what we have seen at large societies, even the most developed societies. When you look at the top five countries who are impacted, United States of America is number one. By the way, as a citizen, I'm, I'm embarrassed by that. But what it tells you is, the holes in our system, and the opportunity to improve them. So there's a huge need here for us to improve public policies, for us to improve the delivery of our care, and also the way we manage risk and so forth. And AI and data can play a role in all of those areas. When it comes to you know, public health, you know, clearly as more COVID data becomes available, we have an opportunity now to better predict what the spread of a certain certain community might be. You know, everyone hears the word model now in the country when there are briefings at the White House or Governor Cuomo does a briefing. It has become part of our vernacular as a country. So we, I, I think AI will, there will be a great reception to AI in healthcare, similar to how we saw the adoption of cloud post 9-11. And now we just need to make sure we quickly build applications and deploy them, and they can solve these challenges in provider settings and health plan, in health plan settings quickly. So, Delauer, I'm so excited to hear the things that you're doing 
in healthcare, you're in a perfect role to be a transformational leader and really change the way healthcare is delivered in the future. So I'm excited to see your path and the path of Lumiata in the future. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed the conversation and wish you all the very best. Thanks for listening to How I Transform This, Success Stories of Transformation in Healthcare, presented by Versus 12. To learn more about how Versus 12 is best situated to transform the healthcare industry and to follow along with this show, be sure to visit Versus12.com slash podcast. We'll see you next time.